Hello and welcome to this tutorial by BlenderDiplom.com. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and in Blender 2.78, which I'm using here, the Boolean modifier has been updated to choose between B-Mesh and Carve option. Maybe that's a little misleading because they're both using the Carve algorithm in order to, let's call it, dissect the meshes, but there is a difference between the two and I, let me just First explain what the boolean modifier does in general and then the difference between the b-mesh and the carve. It's not that big. So now if I add a boolean modifier to Suzanne I have to choose an object. By default it's set to intersect and b-mesh and we'll have a look at all the options here but first I'll choose the object cube. Now Suzanne's gone and that is because it's trying to check what's intersecting and that's nothing. So it removes everything that's not intersecting. If I go to wireframe in order to see better, if I move down the cube, you can see Suzanne appearing. So it's basically a cutout of your model wherever it's inside the volume of the Boolean mesh. And by Boolean mesh, I mean the object selected in the Boolean modifier. Okay. So what you usually want to do is hide the Boolean object, uh, but of course then you can't animate it. So I'm going to hide the cube and now you can see wherever they are intersecting, that's what gets displayed. The opposite of that, of course, is difference. So if I choose difference, then whatever is inside the cube gets cut out. You can see it uh, replaces those faces, which is very nice. So it's not an open mesh, which is basically the most important thing of the cube, of the Boolean modifier, I'd say. It's not an open mesh, it's closing the mesh, and it seems to be working really well. Now, if I set this to union, you can see the cube is reappearing, and I did not unhide the cube. Now the cube is here. So it's basically, what it's doing, it is using the difference, cutting that out, but adding the boolean mesh, the control mesh, this one. So it's cutting out the same part that difference would, but it's adding the original object. And you can see even the original object gets a few more faces if needed. Okay, so big question, what's the difference between carve and B mesh? The biggest difference is, or basically almost the only difference, I'm not sure if there's any more, but with the B-Mesh modifier, you can't very well use planes. You need a mesh with a volume. You can see here I'm using a plane. If I move this up, you can see all you get is this jagged line. If I have the plane, you can see just where the plane is, you get the jagged line. The jagged line is due to a normal interpolation. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that later. But of course, in our case, this doesn't make sense at all. If I zoom into Suzanne, you can see the Boolean modifier creates the intersection. Undo this. So it is doing something with a plane, which I believe is new. Before the, the uh, B-Mesh option just didn't do anything. But it's not doing what I want. I wanted a cross section and kind of walk through, through the mesh like so. But I of course want to cut up, I, will want, I of course want to cut off whatever is, let's say, beneath or below the surface or the plane, depending on its normal. So I can just switch this to car. And if I look from underneath, you can see the plane is cutting away whatever is underneath it. Of course, if I flip the normals, that would flip the operation. But now let's watch what happens if I move the plane up. At some point, the eyes disappear. And this is due to Suzanne being an open mesh. The Boolean modifier does not work well with open meshes. If I select this and move it a bit down, you can see cannot ex execute the Boolean operation. So that means there is sort of an anti-sweet spot where the Boolean modifier just doesn't work. But this is only due to the mesh being open. If I were to let's duplicate this and hide it, 
Now, if I press L with my mouse over the eyes, that will select all the vertices that are linked since the eyes are not linked. They only those get selected. I'm going to delete the vertices, go into vertex selection mode and I'm going over this fairly fast because it's not really part of the Boolean tutorial. So E, Alt, M, etc. It's now a closed mesh and you can see even though I didn't move the plane, it's still working now. And that is due to Suzanne being closed now. Okay, so that's important. The carve algorithm can fail with open meshes. Next issue is this jagged line. You can see it's uh, you can see this is a kind of a per face darkening. If I set this to flat, you can see it disappears. And that is because if I set this to smooth, it's interpolating the normals. And if you try to interpolate normals that are like a 90 degree angles, you or above, usually it's, it's even starts at like 75 or something, you'll get these normal issues. If you want to find out much more about how to avoid these, what causes them and normal maps and so on, have a look at our book. It will be displayed at the end of this tutorial. Sorry, I had to do that. But if you want to get rid of them really quickly in this option, you can use an edge split modifier, which is right here. And now you can see they're gone. This is because if the edge gets to be bigger than 30 degrees, it stops interpolating. And this is what happens right here. If I don't use the edge split and move the monkey, let's move the plane because that would um, be more visible. You can see now, if I move this, I get the jagged edges and they don't animate smooth. Just because the Boolean operation is an either or check. Any intersection is either inside a face or not. If it's inside a face, it will get taken. If it's not, it will jump to the next phase. So animating the Boolean modifier isn't all too simple, but I think if you zoom out just a little bit, you'll be fine as long as you use the edge split modifier to hide the, the um, jumping normals. Of course, if your plane is round, you won't you won't run into these kind of problems, but it's just, it's also good to know. I mean, of course, not the round plane, but if you're using a round object in order to split this. Not that important, edge split modifier is a different chapter. Let's have a look at, um, let's say, final problem of the modifier, and that is materials. On the documentation, it says the materials get preserved, but if I use this sphere, which obviously has three materials and bool it onto this cube, nothing happens. It only takes the material off the cube. And the simple reason for that is the modifiers cannot generate materials. You may be familiar with that from the solidify modifier. You can choose a material offset for the rim and the inside, but you cannot generate one. If you uh, want to offset the index, you need to have the material created over here. Now let's watch what happens if I add the material green to this cube. You can see where the sphere is green, the material appeared. So Blender tries to assign the material off the sphere to the places where it intersects, but of course it doesn't have the red and blue to assign, it just doesn't exist. So there it takes the default material, which is all of these, which is the first one. If you haven't set any, uh, use this assign button to any areas, the default material is of course the first one. Now I could go ahead and uh, choose the other two materials like I did the green with the plus button and then the select button. But if you have a lot of materials, there's a quicker way I'm going to duplicate the sphere and hide the duplication. And actually, no, I'm going to hide the original because that's the Boolean object. And then I shift click on the cube, press Control J. That will kind of destroy my sphere. That's because it's intersecting with its original Boolean object, which is bad because, well, 
the boolean modifier gets confused because others faces are at the same position so if you're asking yourself why did i do that the simple matter is since i joined them it also takes over the materials so it's red green blue now exist all i need to do is hover over this press l and x the vertices and now you can see because of the joining i assigned all the materials automatically and i now can use the boolean modifier to distribute the materials over the modifier object all right one final thing boolean modifier has another great option that's basically used automatically it's preserving the uvs so whenever a face comes from the sphere it will take the uvs of the sphere whenever a face comes from the cube it will take the uvs of the cube and if it's producing uh, sort of like intersected uh, geometry even if it was to create more vertices or geometry with the cube like it did in this example here you go you can see the cube gets more lines created that doesn't matter at all it will still preserve the uvs so that's a very nice thing boolean modifier respects your uvs respects your materials and just to prove it i'm going to press alt y in order to get to the material get to the textured view you can see the uvs of the sphere are being squished at the top and the uvs of the cube they get taken over these stay untouched and the faces that cr get created by the boolean modifier they get the uvs of the original object one final thing that i didn't mention is the overlap threshold a threshold is a value if something is above it it will return one and if something is beneath it it will return zero so again this is not animatable really of course you could but it would jump so for example if i go back to the uh, first layer again i'm going to set this to a difference so we can see better and i increase the threshold you can see this this gets opened and now parts of the geometry disappear and that is because they are further away from the cube than the threshold dictates so i guess if your boolean modifier cuts off too much or too little you might want to play around with the threshold the online documentation says is the threshold for overlapping for overlapping geometry just as the tooltip says if you're uncertain what it does just toy around with it that's it for this tutorial thank you for watching i hope you learned something and please do try this at home